Dear members of the CPMR Baltixi Commission, we hope you are well. And uh, before going uh, on Christmas break, we thought we could do a policy brief related to cohesion policy. Because now what is the context? We are in a transition phase between two programming periods. There is also the recovery plans. The regional authorities have to adopt the programs. So a lot of things happening related to cohesion policy. So that's why we are very delighted to be with Francesco Molica, CPMR Director for Cohesion Policy, to give us some lights a bit on what's happening. Francesco, very nice to be with you today. Thank you, Lucille. Um, my first question to you. Uh, what are, looking at uh, the start of this new programming period, what are the key challenges in your view related to cohesion policy that have an implication for the regional authorities? I think there are three main challenges that we should carefully look at now. The first one relates to the startup of the new programs. I think uh, every, it's in the interest of everyone to uh, get the new programs started as soon as possible. However, uh, the preparation of the partnership agreements and programs is experiencing significant delays. Delays that are unprecedented uh, compared to the uh, uh, former uh, periods. And the reason why this is happening is because on the one hand, the legislation has been adopted only recently, so with many delays, and the national authorities have prioritized the preparation of national recovery plans uh, over the partnership agreements. So the regional authorities have no, uh, no responsibility in this. The second uh, key challenge, I think, is dealing with different funds and also programming periods because we have on the one hand the 1420 period which is wrapping up mm -hmm. we have on the other hand the new period which is uh, uh, about to start uh, we have uh, new instruments uh, such as the recovery resilience facility the react EU top up uh, the just transition fund so all of a sudden regional authorities might find this, themselves dealing with a panoply of mm -hmm. of funds and this is going obviously to generate more workload and more admi administrative burden bureaucracy for them. The third challenge is to achieve, deliver, sorry, a more thorough application of the partnership principle. Mm -hmm. Early evidence uh, from our membership uh, indicates that unfortunately the partnership principle has been in the 21-27 period implemented in a very um, differentiated uh, manner and in many member states such as in Sweden for instance uh, local and regional authorities have not been enough involved in the preparation of partnership mm. principles in contrast with what the code of contact on partnership principles says okay thank you francesco so to summarize you can see there are, we can see there are three main challenges delays in the adoption of the program, the partnership principle, but also the different funds and programs ongoing. And can you give us some information on what have been the lobbying activity of CPMR regarding the, these three challenges? Yes, we were the first stakeholders association to raise the alarm on the impact of delays uh, in the uh, new programming period. Uh, through a note, uh, through several, uh, well, in several public occasions, uh, our president or our representatives uh, um, highlighted uh, this uh, uh, concern. Um, regarding the partnership principle, uh, we sent in November a letter to uh, Commissioner Ferreira um, highlighting a number, formulating a number of concrete proposals on how to improve uh, Mm -hmm. uh, the application of the partnership principle, especially in those member states where uh, it is not implemented properly for the time being. Uh, and regarding the uh, issue of fragmentation, regarding the fact that the regional authorities are uh, now uh, dealing with too many funds, um, we are now preparing a note uh, where we focus on, on this issue and we are in the process of reflecting uh, upon concrete proposals for the future in order mm. to fix this. And so um, the members, member region of the CPMR Baltic Sea Commission can help you to feed into that work for different uh, engagement then um, and, and provide uh, feedback from their own uh, experiences. Absolutely, we already had 
uh, bilateral uh, or groups meetings uh, uh, with some of the members of the Baltic Sea Commission and actually uh, the activities that I have just mentioned are also the result of these meetings, are also the result of uh, uh, feedbacks that have been gathered through these meetings uh, from your membership. Well, my second question for Francesco would be, um, now we have the recovery plans, there is the cohesion programs as well. What are the complementarity, but also the risk of the implementation of these two program or instruments? I think the parallel implementation of the national recovery resilience plans on the one hand and the cohesion policy programs on the other hand uh, could provide many opportunities for the local and regional authorities provided that full complementarity is delivered and full coordination is deli delivered between the two instruments. However, early evidence indicates that this is not happening for the time being, including in Baltic Sea Commission uh, member states. Uh, there are, unfortunately, many risks, therefore. Uh, the main one is that the two instruments will end up overlapping basically financing uh, the same uh, things uh, because there are many similarities in terms of investment priorities between the two instruments. Another big risk is that they will actually start competing one with the other uh, to finance indeed the same projects. In order to avoid that, the instruments need to go hand in hand. In order to go hand in hand, we need a shared go an inclusive governance in the implementation of the national recovery resilience plans. Unfortunately, this is not happening uh, in many member states, including uh, uh, in Scandinavian member states. Well, uh, we are short time before 2022. What will be um, the CPMR agenda related, related to cohesion policy? What kind of activities uh, will happen and how the member regions can feed into that work? We are working on several files. There will be in March a very important event, the cohesion, uh, the eighth cohesion forum organized by the European Commission. Uh, the CPMR will have a speaking slot in this uh, uh, event, which is the most important event for all uh, cohesion policy uh, stakeholders. It will provide a key opportunity uh, for us to uh, start um, conveying uh, uh, messages on the future of cohesion policy because the uh, implementation of the 21-27 period is already uh, giving us a, a, a lot of food for thought uh, for the next programming period. Mm. Uh, talking about the next programming period, uh, Francesco, what are the challenges or key issues that you see for post-27? CPMR is a, a forward-thinking organization. We try to think and to act uh, already uh, well in advance. What are, what are the issues that you see for post-2027 already? Uh, it is important to start reflecting uh, now uh, on the future of cohesion policy. Uh, because uh, the key challenges that I mentioned in my uh, first uh, um, answer, uh, the delays, uh, the fragmentation of the funds, uh, uh, they will have, may have an impact on the debate over mm -hmm. the future of cohesion policy and they may unfortunately um, reinforce the arguments of the detractors of cohesion policy, those people who uh, support, uh, advocate uh, uh, reducing the budget of cohesion policy or even the, the, remove, dropping cohesion policy uh, altogether. Uh, what we need to do, and that's important, is to demonstrate that cohesion policy has an added value, that cohesion policy uh, delivers, uh, that uh, it uh, is uh, instrumental in uh, achieving, delivering uh, on the uh, priorities of the green and uh, digital transition. Okay, so uh, you can count on the member of the CPMR Baltic Sea Commission to provide this evidence on the delivery of the policy. Uh, we hope that this policy brief was useful and uh, thanks a lot, Francesco, for your time. And uh, you for let's uh, work together um, in 2022 then. Bye, thanks.